we've been collecting sap and turning it into maple syrup for about eight years now and throughout the years the biggest challenge has been filtering anybody that has made maple syrup knows that that final filter right when it comes out of the finish pan can be the trickiest because this isn't sedimentation that's sugar in order to filter in the past we've had to keep heat on it so it would go through the filter and what happens is when you cook this too hot that's what makes that sugar drop out and you can see the difference between batches what did we do different sometimes when you run a larger batch of finished maple syrup you have this issue but we think we have a solution and this year we're going to try a vacuum filter system to start the process we need a stock pot on the bottom that will hold the finished product but we need a smaller pot on top which kind of holds the filter in place and where you dump the finished syrup into so so I don't get in trouble I'm gonna yell real quick and see if I can use this hey can I use this smaller stock pot yeah all right you see how I said that if I would have said borrowed that mean I'd have to bring it back I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. The first step is to cut the bottom off of the stock pot and then smooth out some of the rough edges. We had to order a larger top to fit on the big stock pot that we had. So I drilled holes inside of that top and I'll show you why in a minute. A quick note, we are doing nothing to the large stock pot. Do not cut that. All right, guys, here's what we hope is the solution to our filtering issues. This is a vacuum filter system that we have created our team, which is a few of us trying to think the best possible solutions and any contingencies. So what we did, we wanted to look to see what we had around the farm. Now you can buy these units for 600 to $10,000, but we're not at that stage and we're kind of into trying to figure ourselves out here. So what this takes is a stock pot. Now this stock pot's from the pantry. It's one of our favorite ones. It gets used all the time. So I didn't do anything to it. No holes in it, didn't cut anything. Now, we did go online to order this top to fit that stock pot. And then as you can see, drilled a bunch of holes in here and so that we can put our filters on top of there. You have two filters, a pre-filter and then the sand filter. Get that off there. So then you can see this. Okay, so this is a vacuum hose. I wanted to make it clear so that we could see if any sap was getting sucked up in there and we can stop because we hook a shop vac up to this. Now, as you saw, the way that I asked in the pantry is if I could use the pot instead of borrow it. Why? Because I cut the bottom off it. Oh yeah. So I don't want anybody to get in trouble for taking a stock pot and cutting the bottom off it unless you have full permission. Remember, if you said, hey, can I borrow this? You gotta bring it back, but if you say, hey, can I use this? There's enough gray area there where you can get away with cutting it off and not getting yelled at too bad. So, let me show you how this works. That pot goes on here. You can see. So the whole idea is you create a vacuum with the vacuum cleaner and it sucks all of that sap through this filter instead of waiting for a couple hours for it to happen it should happen over a couple of minutes while the sap is still at the proper temperature then we take these pots and we clamp them together and we hook a shop vac hose up to the clear hose and we turn it on all we need now is some sap to try it out so far so good though i think
uh, just turned off the vacuum there's just a little bit of stuff left in there and when it takes so much effort to turn this sap into syrup I have a hard time leaving that in there but I don't know if you can see this or not it's all that sugar sand that we've been trying to get out of there it's still sweet so it kind of kills me to not sit here all day and suck it through but this is a test run so we're gonna live with it this time we've learned a lot about this setup uh, once we wash it and get it all taken apart then I'm gonna upgrade it a little bit and I'll show you what I think might need to be done in just a minute Take the vacuum hose off just so we can work with this thing. You can see it's got sugar in it all stuck to it so I'm gonna get it in that boiling water all right check it out that's what we go for underneath I don't know if you can see it, but not quite sure what to do with this. I might throw this in the boiling water so we can reuse it, but um, as you can see, we do lose a little syrup in there, but that's how it always goes. Put that in the boiling water. One of the best parts of the job, if you're careful, is to make sure it tastes all right. Oh, you don't want that to go to waste. Mm, all right, we're gonna put this in there too. That is the finished product. That looks good and clean. Let's get it inside. This is the first time that we use this vacuum filter system. And it was all about trying to figure out how we could get better for when the really big runs come. So you can see with this filter, it gives us a really good idea. Those are the holes that we drilled. That's the only spot that the sap is going through. So that tells me I'm going to drill a bunch of holes so that we can get more going through here because it's all about surface area and it's only going through where you see where we drill the holes. The rest of this discoloration is just from where the sap sat until it's turn to go through those holes. So we're going to drill a bunch more holes. I think that's going to help also. I think one of the things we can do to increase the suction in here is to use the next larger shop vac. Thankfully we have several shop vacs of different sizes so we need one that has better suction. But you can see in the clear observation tube there was no syrup at all sucked through there which is a good sign. Only steam when it was really hot. It also seemed to make a difference that as the sap cooled down it didn't work as great as I had hoped, but maybe with greater suction we can. You can see I ended up going through and using tape and everything because we did lose a lot of suction through every tiny spot. So probably put weather stripping on the bottom of that lid in a gasket where the vacuum hose attaches. We 
are back here for a second try of the vacuum filter system. This time we went with the bigger shop back. We have several here. For some reason we have a lot of them. So we bumped up to the next size. But I did get the hose from the smaller one to fit. Now, this is what we've done. We've sealed every possible spot where we were having vacuum leaks. As you can see, there is now a weather strip under the lid. See that black? We were losing a lot of vacuum through there. And we drilled a bunch more holes. I'll show you that after we run the sap. I have high hopes that that sap is going to run through there because we, there's more syrup this time. So we really need our vacuum system to work. Try it out. Let's take this apart and see how we did. Now, I want to say that before I'd stand here holding the filter like everybody else or however, you know, put it in a bucket, any type of holder, and we'd always end up having to squeeze out the filter. A lot of times we lose so much, sometimes up to a quart, which is terrible because of how long everything takes and how tasty it is. I mean, I've been known to lick the ground. So I had what I thought was a really good idea, which is this weather stripping under the lid, but it wouldn't allow me to tighten down this bucket very well. So we lost just a little bit, broke my heart, but I uh, had to wipe it up a little bit and taste it. Um, good thing I was here to wipe it up and, and taste it. So I'll take this apart and show you the modifications that we made. The bigger shop vac definitely worked better. So I'm going to take it apart. So there's that. can see there's the goo. It kills me because it tastes good, but that's where that sugar sand and, and uh, stuff is. But we'll put that in here to wash it. All right. So, all right, let me show you this difference. You can kind of see those holes. That's the filter we used before, and then we washed it. And now you can see a bunch more holes, tons and tons of holes. So make as many holes as you possibly can. Then we got the product. That's that's the good stuff right there. Let's get that in. All right, let's check this out. This was run through the vacuum filter system that we created here, and as you can tell, there is nothing in this batch, so that's exciting. Mm -hmm. 